Hello, live video, and welcome to the third and final part of the uh, Amiga Retro Episode 5, which has been covering the Pinball Trilogy series. The game, obviously, from the intro you just viewed, is the third and final installment, which was Pinball Illusions. Now, this came out, as it said, it's dated in 1995, and after the success of Pinball Dreams and Pinball Fantasies, um, Pinball Illusions promise much of the same. Only better. There were more colourful tables in um, in this game, but a lack, uh, alas, uh, a lack of a number of tables. There was only three in Pinball Illusions. However, it did boast better graphics, better in gameplay, and better uh, sound effects. It was also the very first game to introduce multi ball, which was the one uh, the, the option where you could have more than one simultaneous ball on the table. The first table, Law and Justice, with a law enforcement theme as it sounds, um, has a number of sub-games within the table itself, like playing riots and stuff, and those, even though it's not, I couldn't get it to actually get to the stage of that on the footage of any of the tables in this review, you could play them on the little LCD bit at the top. Yeah, so you were playing these sub-games within the LCD as well as the table itself, it was weird, but um, a hell of a lot of fun to play. Anyhow, we had the three tables. One was called Law and Justice, which was set around the law enforcement theme, but along the lines of like Judge Dredd, or you know, what, you know stuff like that. Uh, there was a second table called Baywatch, which was basically a parody of the TV show Baywatch, but, um, that dealt with dealt with areas of like um, doing things like to impress the girls, surfing, racing, and all that stuff. You you know, typical 80s. Baywatch style beach from thing. The third and final table was Extreme Sports, uh, which basically, you know, uh, skydiving, jet skiing, uh, along with sub, uh, sub games like racing and stuff like that. Really, fun three, get, fun three tables. The three tables as a whole were as good as any of the previous eight from the two other games. The graphics are excellent, the music and sound effects were great, and the CD version also comes with CD quality stereo rack, uh, soundtracks for it in almost uh, all parts of the game. You know, overall a real improvement on the uh, polar, uh, polar generated tracks, which were done with the four, eight polar chipset. There are minor niggles. Um, there are a couple of bugs which have been ironed out in, which should have been ironed out in the beta test. Including one crash. Yes. Unfortunately, you even get to see that bug in this demo because on the third table it did do just that. On me. <laughs> um, although it, I, you know, although you get to see it on that one, the, the 1200 version it was released on the 1200, obviously, and so it, it was the 1295 was still in its early days. There was the crossover between the, the Amiga ST to the PCs and consoles and stuff. So a lot of the games were being churned out to try and keep the, um, the systems. You know, the platform's popularity running, the last it never finally phased out and went underground. But as I say, there were some bugs in the game. Um, 
the CD, the CD and the Amiga version had a slight bug crash uh, where it crashed on you, uh, especially on the Law and Justice table. It was kind of frustrating. Uh, but the problems were relit when uh, you upgrade to a SCSI card, especially the Blizzard one. The CD soundtrack, um, however, does make up for it a, a lot. All in all, yet another game in the pinball series uh, from Digital Illusions team and 21st Century Entertainment. Short and sweet with this one because there wasn't much info available on the net to actually re- you know, to read out to you. However, enjoy the three, uh, three tables and I'll see you in episode 6 where we'll be covering a completely different game, which I haven't chosen yet. <laughs> Take care people. <laughs>